Dr. Suleiman. I don't want to name anyone, but please can you switch off your mic? Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Aruz. You have explained all those domains really well. And uh, for the beginners, it might be a bit difficult that uh, what examples were being given in that. And it, it might seem that, oh, it's really a complex thing. It's a really a difficult thing to achieve, uh, achieve a certain ec excellent level in all those domains. It's not that difficult. You will learn with the practice. And when you will be knowing what you are supposed to do, how you how you are supposed to do a consultation based on the history of registration and the rest, the rest type of them. So with time, hopefully you will improve. So let's go into the detail of that, that how you should distribute your eight minutes inside a station. For example, you are being given a history of registration. A history of registration, let me just revise it, that I told you that in a history of registration, you will be given a presenting complaint, for example, a chest pain, and you will be given a task to talk to the patient, take the detailed history, go to the diagnosis and discuss the management with the patient, okay? So over here, you have to ask a lot of questions from the patient. So you have to give a bit more time to the data gathering, okay? Some people say you should give six minutes to the data gathering and the remaining two minutes to the management part. I will slightly disagree with them because uh, First thing, you don't need to spend that much time in the history in the history taking. You will finish it in around four and a half or five minutes. And as I told you that the data gathering carries four marks and the management carries the four marks as well. So it's equally important. So you should spend at least three minutes, if not four, at least three minutes in the diagnosis and management. Because what's the point if you have taken a, a really good history and got four marks in uh, the history taking data gathering, and you are not left time with for the diagnosis and the management part and you score zero or one, it will, it will down your overall score. So it's better to manage the time well, perform well in data gathering and also spend some time in the diagnosis and management part, okay? So next we will discuss uh, the time management according to the different type of station. This was for the history based. In the examination only station, for example, outside the cubicle, you are given a task to go inside and pass the police catheter. You don't need to take any history. You don't need to do any management. All the eight minutes for the examination. However, this sort of stations are not common these days, but let's just give you an idea about that. Like if you are supposed to do an examination, you have to spend all the eight minutes on that. Okay. The next one is a combined station. Let me just go to a bit detail of it. In a history-based station, for example, a chest pain, you're supposed to take the history. You're not going to miss the examination part because that is included in the data gathering. It's history and examination. You will just say, based on the presenting complaint of the patient, you will just say, I will like to check the vitals and do the examination of the chest. But the examination findings will be already handed over to you in the form of a sheet. They will be written over there. You don't need to actually do the examination, but you should be knowing that what examination should be done if a patient comes with this complaint, okay? Only then they will give you the examination findings. The simulator gives you already recorded findings, okay? So, so you don't need to do the examination in the history part. How combined station is different? A certain task will be written outside that take the history do the relevant examination and then discuss the diagnosis and man. So in a combined station, you will have to take the history, actually have to perform the physical examination as per the complaint of the patient, and then discuss the diagnosis and management. So there comes a little bit struggle with the time management because uh, now you'll have to do the examination. So you have to spend some time on that. So the time distribution for that should be like two minutes for the history, two to three minutes for the examination, and then two to three minutes for the management part. It might sound really difficult at the moment, but with practice and preparation, you will be pro in this. Okay. The next one is the ethics and the counseling scenarios. In the ethics scenario, 
as we previously mentioned, that most of the time you are already given a diagnosis, that the patient has this diagnosis and you will have to explain, let's say, lifestyle modification or how to take the medicines. So you don't need to go into the detail of the history taking of a diagnosis, which you already know. All you need to know is a, a little bit about his current situation, okay? Like how are you now? When you came to the hospital, what was your actual issue? What was the complaint? Just take a brief history and then go in the management. And in a counseling based station, the main portion is the management, that is the counseling. And same goes for the ethics based scenarios. You are given an ethical scenario that, for example, uh, a patient has unfortunately got subarachnoid hemorrhage. The patient's condition is terminal. And you will have to break that bad news to a relative of that patient. You already know the diagnosis. You don't need to go into the detailed history. I'm not saying you don't need to take the history, just a brief history, okay? And then address that ethical situation. Spend more time on that because depending upon the type of station, the specific task is given to you and you have to achieve that task. If you will spend more time in the data gathering and you will leave less time for the management in a counseling or ethical based scenario, as Dr. Arush told you, they mark you in the time management. If you are spending more time on a useless thing, I mean, by saying useless, I mean, which is not more required in that particular task, they will mark you down on the time management, okay? So the next thing is, uh, I have uh, deliberately omitted the psychiatry and the semen based station time management at the moment because I think that would be a bit complex. So we will leave that for the onward session because we'll go into the detail of that. Uh, over here, now I'm gonna give you a few examples, examples of the description given outside the cubicle. I, I'm, I'm just saying that what you need to do in a history-based station, what you need to do in a counseling-based station, examination station, combined station. But how do you know that if it's a history-based station or a counseling station or an ethical scenario from standing outside the cubicle? Outside the cubicle, a description a task is given to you in this form. And I'm just giving you a rough example of that. For example, and the task given to you is that you are a FY2 in emergency department. Mr. Zon, 70 years old male, has came to you with the complaint of the chest pain. Talk to the patient, take brief history, do relevant examination, and discuss the diagnosis and management with him. So by reading this description, what comes in your mind that what sort of station it would be, you can, you can give your answers in the chat box and then we can discuss if you are understanding it or not. So what sort of station it is? Is it a history-based, a counseling, or a combined station? Okay, someone said combined and someone said it's history-based, combined, okay. So as I told you, when they will be expecting you to do the examination, they will give a clear-cut clear -cut task that you have to do the relevant examination. So this is an example of a combined station. They have clearly written outside that you have to take the history, do the relevant examination, and then discuss the diagnosis and management. So it's a sort of uh, combined station. Let's move to the next example. You are a FY2 in emergency department again. Mr. Smith, 75 years old male, has came with the complaint of back pain. Talk to the patient and address his concerns. So what comes in your mind with this description that what sort of station it is? Yes, you're very right. It is a history-based station because they have not written that you have to do the examination. And secondly, all you know from this description is just a presenting complaint. You don't know what is the diagnosis of the patient. Uh, so it, it, it cannot be a counseling-based station. Let me add one more thing that in the counseling based station, it's not essential that they have given you the diagnosis all the time. Sometimes they might have given you an abnormal lab finding, like you are given the lab reports uh, with a scenario that the patient came a week earlier and he got his, let's say, liver function test, uh, test done. And now the patient is back here to collect his reports. 
you already have those reports so you have sort of idea that what might be the problem with the patient okay so because more data is given to you in that form so it would be a counseling based station you will have to just take a brief history that why you got this test done and then relate his history to those lab reports make a diagnosis and then explain it to him okay so the counseling based scenario either they they will give you a clear cut diagnosis and sometimes they can give you some lab reports okay let's move to the next example you are a fy2 in the gp clinic mrs sara has brought her 2 months old baby with the complaint of rash talk to her and address her concerns so what sort of station it is any answers yes again it is a history based scenario uh let me point towards a few things i have highlighted a few things in 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 the scenario written over here it's really important that you should be knowing your setting either you are sitting in a gp clinic or you are sitting in the emergency department because your management varies accordingly okay so this is the point that when you have those 90 second you should be planning okay i am in the gp clinic what i can do in the gp clinic if a patient is unstable i need to refer him to the hospital for the admission you cannot admit the patient in the gp clinic okay so this is important that you should be knowing your second setting and the second more uh, second thing is that a history based station can be from any field for example this one is from the pediatrics the previous one with the back pain could be from surgery could be from uh, the medicine okay so a history based scenario can be from any any field medicine surgery gynae or speeds okay the framework would remain same just a bit difference of the history taking in the pediatric and the gynae or speeds and the next scenario is you are a fy2 in ane department julie age 18 has presented to the hospital complaining of the left iliac fossa pain she has 8 weeks of amenorrhea pregnancy test has been done and is positive please talk to the patient take relevant history and discuss the plan of management with her by reading the description what do you assess what sort of station it is so no clues a history based a history based combined uh, to be a combined station you will be clearly uh, given a description that you will have to do a relevant examination it's not written over here okay so it's a history based station because all you are given in the description is a history the complaint of the patient the patient has came with the left iliac fossa pain and you'll have to take the history and then be the diagnosis and then discuss that diagnosis okay so it's a history based station let's move to the next one another example you are a fy2 in the medicine department mrs peterson is 35 came to the hospital with leg pain so here you are given a complaint but what's more she has been diagnosed with a deep venous thrombosis dvt she has been prescribed warfarin and is about to get discharged please talk to the patient explain about her medication and address her concerns so what sort of station it is yeah it's a easy cheesy counseling station that you already know the diagnosis and you are given in the task that you have to explain the medication and the rest of the lifestyle modifications okay well then uh, next example you are a fy2 in medicine mrs henry is 92 admitted in the hospital with the respiratory failure okay so again you know the diagnosis here she is unconscious and terminally ill all family members are coming to the ward praying and making loud noise talk to the grandson and tell him that only two relatives can visit the patient at a time and there is a special note given that according to the hospital policy from 2 to 5 pm it is the silent hours no one is allowed to attend the patient at that time so it is a ethical based scenario in which there is a, a ethical situation that the patient is terminally ill 
so obviously the relatives would be having some sentiments and they would be in grief but you have to follow the hospital policy and certain protocols so you will have to explain this to them in a really empathetic and polite way so this is a ethical scenario and most of the time in the ethical scenarios you will be also given a special note okay like i i didn't give any special note in the previous session but in the ethical <coughs> scenario most of the time it will be given you will be already knowing okay the ethical scenario from standing outside the clinic okay okay so the next example is you are a fy2 in a and e department mr smith age 65 is brought to the hospital by her wife because he is unwell talk to the patient assess his condition and discuss the diagnosis and management what sort of station it is i'm waiting the answers to be history based <laughs> yeah uh it's it's not a combined because you're not you're not given the instruction that you have to do the examination so it can be two things as i told you that in a history based station you will be given a complaint so sometimes the complaint can be given outside the cubicle that the patient has came with the chest pain okay so you can make up your mind what are the questions i need to ask in the chest pain scenario okay but sometimes it 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 would be a bit different like you will be just given the instruction that the patient has came with some complaint the complaint will not be given to you outside the cubicle you will have to move inside the cubicle and then they will tell you their complaint so either this can be a history based station or it can be a different station a simman based station like you move into the cubicle you are expecting a patient but here you see a simman lying down there as i have highlighted the word unwell so simman based scenarios are mostly given in those situations where you will have to deal with the acute emergency okay acutely ill patient because um, because a uh, simulator cannot mimic as a acutely ill patient he cannot have an apoplexis okay and so that's why they put a sim man to mimic all those examination findings and, and they have a monitor attached with that okay so there are two things the first one sometimes in a history based station you can be uh, given a vague thing that he has came with some complaint and you have to move in and it might be a mild complaints which can be a history based station but if the patient is critically ill and you see a simman over there then it's a simman based station and how to approach a simman based station uh, we'll go into detail of that in the next sessions uh, and there is a question how to assess then it's an examination uh to be a examination station in the task in the last lines you will be given a clear cut description that take the history do the relevant examination do the relevant examination and then discuss the diagnosis and the management okay so now here is a mock scenario uh, uh, one minute just... sir uh but yeah. whenever they are mentioning this assess so we can assess only by by examining the patient right yeah by by taking the vitals and all these things yes 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 you are right so uh, okay the... mm -hmm. yeah about the same previous scenario i'm talking that you are uh, telling there's the same one station and the patient mm -hmm. is unwell and then they okay about the talk to the patient okay we'll take any history assess the patient obviously we have to take the vitals and then after the relevant examination for example if the respiration or the oxygen saturation is dropped we could auscultate all these things doesn't it come in that yes you you are right you are right let me make it clear again you in a history based station you are not supposed to make a diagnosis just based on history without doing the examination what i am saying is that based on the complaint of the patient like a patient has came with a back pain or a headache or a chest pain based on his particular complaint you after taking the history you will say i would like to check your vital signs including your blood pressure pulse rate uh the the breathing rate and the oxygen saturation and your temperature you will say that and then you will localize the examination let's say in a chest pain scenario you will say i would like to examine your chest okay 
So you, this is a part of assessment. You are supposed to do the examination or you, let me say in this way, you are supposed to know the examination findings, if not do the examination. When you will say this and this, the simulator will hand over a paper to you and the examination findings will be already written on that. Let's say the patient's blood pressure is 130 by 80, pulse is 92, temperature is 37, oxygen saturation is 96 at room air, okay? And on the examination of the chest, uh, let's say he has got a, a bronchial breathing pass in the right lower lobe. This examination finding will already be given to you, but only when you will narrate what examination you want to do. If you will just say, I would like to examine you, they're not gonna give you any examination findings because you have not specifically told them what examination you want to do. I hope I have, I have Cleared your query? Yes, I know it's cleared. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's not complicate it with the Simman based scenario at the moment because if it would be a Simman based scenario, you will be taking the history, you will be doing the examination and dealing the acute acute illness at the moment as well because it's emergency scenario. So it doesn't go in that way that take a history first, do the examination, your patient might die at that time. Okay, so in the Simman based scenario, all things goes side by side. Okay. So keep the history-based scenario simple at the moment. We'll go into the detail of the cement when the time will come. Okay, so let's move to the mock scenario. In this scenario, I'll be simulating as a patient and Dr. Aruj will be here as a candidate, a doctor. And after doing the mock practice session, uh, you'll, you can ask any questions or any queries and we'll answer that. Uh, there are eight minutes for each day. But to keep it, keep it simple for you, like uh, understandable so that if anyone of you want to note anything or you can grasp the knowledge uh, easily, we'll keep it a bit slow. So we won't put the timer in this mock scenario at the moment. Later on, we will do uh, the mock scenarios with the timing as well. Okay, and so just to simplify, we're not gonna put time. Okay, so this is the description given to Dr. Aruz and I will be the patient. And then we will demonstrate how you are supposed to do a consultation in a lab to exam. Okay. So, Dr. Aruj, over to you. You can read the description and begin. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Adnan. So, the scenario says you are an F2 in GP. Peter Smith, age 65, presents to the clinic with some concerns. Talk to the patient, take history, assess the patient, and discuss further management with the patient, address the patient concerns. Okay. So I will begin. Hello. Okay. Hello, Doc. My name is Dr. Aruj, and I'm one of the doctors here in the GP practice. Could I please confirm your name and age? Uh, yeah, Doctor. My name is Peter, and I'm 65. Okay. It's nice to see you, Peter. How can I help you today? Uh, doctor, actually, I'm having this back pain from last three months, so it was bothering me. That's why I came to you. Okay. I'm really sorry to hear about that. Um, how about if we have a little discussion about it and um, see how I can help you with it? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Before we proceed any further, are you comfortable to talk? Yeah, doctor, I can manage. Okay, that's good. So could you please tell me a bit more about this pain? Uh, I know you told me it's there for three months, but anything else that you would like to add to it? Uh, doctor, I, I think it began gradually mm -hmm. and initially it was on and off and it has been continuous for like for around months. It's been mm -hmm. here and okay. I haven't noticed anything which makes it worse, but yeah, I've been taking two tablets of paracetamol three times a day and it, mm -hmm. it helps a little bit, but not much. Okay, I can see that this is a really disturbing situation. Having this pain for three months is a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, well, you've done the right thing by coming here and I'll try my best by the end of the conversation to be able to help you. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so um, could you please grade this pain for me between mm -hmm. one to 10, 10 being the worst pain? Uh, doctor, it's around four or five. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, you told me you take paracetamol, uh, two tablets, three times a day, and that relieves your yeah. pain. Yeah, doctor. Okay. All right. So during these three months, have you, uh, did you seek any medical advice for this? 
no doctor i thought it would be just a muscle pain so i have been taking the paracetamol but it's not helping the pain is not going away so i thought to came to you okay uh, could can you remember anything that could have started the pain in, initially no it it was vague in the start no mm-hmm. i cannot relate anything okay and do you think that the pain goes towards your legs mm, no okay have you noticed any weakness in your legs no okay any numbness around your back passage no okay please don't mind me asking these questions they might re- seem a bit um, sensitive but these are just to find out if there's anything else so other than mm-hmm. the back pain is there anything else that is bothering you today mm uh, yeah doctor i i noticed that from last few months i have been going to loo more often mm-hmm. even i had to get up at the night to go to the loo and uh sometimes i the, the stream of the urine is so mm-hmm. weak yeah that that's what i have noticed okay all right thank you so much for uh, disclosing this information for me but just a few more sensitive questions related to this uh so you've noticed this for a few months have you also noticed that while you pee you do have some burning sensation in the urine no okay any changes in the smell or color no all right uh, just a few more questions please don't be alarmed have you ever noticed any blood in the urine no no okay that's reassuring have you noticed any weight loss recently mm, yeah i noticed that my my clothes are getting loose okay all right and um, but, but you haven't noticed how much in how much time is that correct uh, i i have not i have not mm-hmm. checked it but yeah it, it is here that my okay. clothes are getting loose okay and how's your appetite these days um I, i don't feel hungry most of the time okay all right have you noticed any lumps all over the body no okay that's fine have you noticed any fever recently no any tummy pain at all uh no okay i know i've been asking a lot of questions but just a few more uh to make sure that uh, there's nothing else going on so uh, mm-hmm. do you have any medical problems from before no any blood pressure any prostate related problems no any medications that you might be on other than the paracetamol no okay do you have any allergies no okay um do you have any problems running in the family no okay so just a few questions about your lifestyle sometimes they might be related to do you smoke mm i i used to smoke but i quit years ago around 20 years ago Okay, well I must appreciate you for that. I know quitting is not easy, but you've done uh, a very right and a good thing for yourself. And uh, what about drinking? Mm, no, I don't drink. Okay, very good. So, I know that you know pain for a long time along with the other symptoms. How have you been coping with it? Uh, yeah, doctor, I was just trying to trying to adjust at mm-hmm. at the start. I thought mm-hmm. it will go away, but no, the pain is there, so it's it's bit bothering me so that's why mm. that's why i i'm here to seek your consultation okay all right and uh, anything in specific that you expecting from me today when you came here mm, doctor i am just worried that the pain mm. is not going away so is it something serious okay is there anything that comes to your mind when you say that or when you think that uh, i am just worried that can mm. be some sort of cancer Okay, I can see that you're concerned that this being something serious like cancer, but what I I want to do is now I would like to examine you. I would like to first take mm-hmm. your vitals, including your blood pressure, temperature, heart rate, breathing rate. I would like to examine mm-hmm. you, examine your back, do a straight leg raising test. Also, I would like to examine your back passage. I will have a chaperone with me, and I will ensure your privacy. Meanwhile we would also like to do some blood tests including the normal blood test looking for your infections your blood levels how your kidneys have been functioning and we will take a urine sample also to look for infections will that be all right okay yeah no okay. so yes, the after these we will... okay mm-hmm. examination oh. findings given to you the vital signs are normal there is no tenderness in the spine mm-hmm. and straight leg rest uh, raised test is negative 
and on the examination of the PR examination, and the, the prostate is enlarged with the irregular rough margins. Uh, CBC is normal and the LFTs, RFTs are normal. And moreover, urine complete is also normal. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Peter, we have done certain examination on you. I examined your back and there seems to be no pain there. We took your vitals and the vitals are also normal. The blood test and the urine test, fortunately, have also come back normal. Mm -hmm. However, when I examined your, uh, when we examined your back passage, we did find that there is a certain organ called the prostate, which is enlarged. Do you know what that is, prostate is? Yeah, yeah, I know it. It's a gland. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's right. This is a gland that is present at the neck of the bladder, and this enlargement. The, the enlargement of this gland, along with other symptoms, like you mentioned, uh, well-passing urine. You also mentioned that you have noticed some weight loss. All these symptoms are, uh, are something that is concerning me at the moment. Do you have any idea? You've mentioned that this could be mm -hmm. cancer, but other Doctor than that... Cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I know that uh, you're really worried yeah, about yeah, cancer. I'm worried that this is the cancer. Yes. So uh, the thing is that at this moment, we are not exactly sure what this could be. This could be something like infection, uh, which we have actually ruled out, but still we will need to do further more investigations to find out if there is something like um, infection going on in the kidneys. But otherwise, it could also be something serious or something sinister, like unfortunately cancer. Mm. Are you getting so, me? Peter? What are you going to do for me? Yes. So, yeah. uh, okay. So, Peter, what we're going to do is I'll be asking my senior to come and review you and assess you again. I will be, we will be discussing with my senior to change your medications as you've been taking six painkillers a day. That can be harmful for you. So, we will be changing you to a stronger painkiller that will help mm -hmm. you with the pain. Will that be all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will be really good. Okay. Other than that, yeah, yes, we will yeah. be uh, doing some specific tests. We'll be arranging another appointment for that. That will be another blood test, like a PSA. This is this is something that is released by the prostate. And immediately we will be referring you with a two weeks referral to the okay. specialist. Are you getting me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so the 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 specialist mm -hmm. will be further investigating you, will be further examining you with the more specific tests, and he will be the one who will confirm for you what's going on. Okay, no, okay. Thank okay, you. because during this time, if your symptoms get worse, you notice any um, blood in the urine or the back pain gets worse, please immediately come back to us or call 999. Can you do that? Yeah, sure, doctor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, uh, I think the session is going to end. So we will leave this meeting and again join for the question and answer session. Okay. okay.